If you've got a flat or one waiting to happen, call Big O's Tires in Prairieville. We offer fast and friendly service for all types of equipment, from big rigs to golf carts. Don't let a tire keep those tractors or cherry pickers out of commission for long. We've got a complete supply of automotive and commercial tires available. Big O's Tires is family owned and operated and has more than 35 years experience in the industry. Call Big O's for on-site service or repair. We'll get you back to work in a hurry. Hi right, folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. I'm Goosey Guys. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. Fishing in bayou streams And dreaming from dream to dream Flipping on what mama nature stored Yeah, you won't believe the things I saw On old Lake Maripal Mama nature, you're gonna drive us all insane the rustle of their wings in that cold December wind brings me back to the banks of Maripal. Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by the following sponsors. All right, man, you know, we've been having uh, kind of a little bit of warm weather, mm -hmm. you know, in between yep. the cold fronts, really nice and warm, you sure. know, 68, 70, and uh, getting them uh, fish uh, tuned up. You know, I made a trip down to Florida a couple weekends ago for my grandson Kanan's birthday mm -hmm. and uh, caught me about a six and a half pound bass in a golf course pond in Gulf Breeze, Florida, chock a block full of eggs. Yeah. You know, and uh, they ready ready for the spawn, you know. Yeah, particularly down that low. Yeah. 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 So uh it's it's getting the right time yeah. for that that kind of fishing. And look, what we talk about tonight, a lot of now some people fish all year long, but for the most part, most of us been hunting all year and all and there's a lot of right. things to start getting in order before you go fishing and you run out there, you know. We can be talking about boat accessories, you know, batteries. Right. They don't like the cold. No. Just because they was working last August when you put that thing under the shed and, and think that it's going to be working this, this spring, that you may not be the case. That you, yeah, you got <laughs> you to start checking things like that, yeah. charging them up, see if they take a charge, put water in them. Right. Uh, you know, that's just one thing. I mean, trailers, you know, tires dry right over right. time. Um, Check them out, make sure they grease got air in them. Yeah. In, the, in the trailer, you know. and. And then it goes into, you, you know, I mean, there's other things on your boat, too, registrations and things like that you make sure you got all right. that stuff in order and uh, just different things, you know. Things break over. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, just sitting there, yeah. You know, one of the, I used to own a real repair business, and uh, Steve Pelcher, mm -hmm. he still does it. And uh, one of the things that used to be a pet peeve of mine and his as well is all fishermen. Sure. Wait I know what you're going to say. To get their reels yep. clean, you know, no they doubt. Do that, you know. And so uh, all Broke this reels. whole season, they've been setting yeah. up. And a week before you get ready to go fishing, oh, man, I need to get these reels clean, mm -hmm. you know. And so you still got a little bit of time, but pretty soon he's going to be loaded sure. up. Sure. Because everybody's going to be bringing yeah. them all at one time. We do the same thing to a gun repairman and four-wheeler well, people and everything else, too, on the other side of the coin when thing, it gets yeah. into that. Yeah, all that needs to be taken care of right now. You're right. right. You know, things such as changing line if you want to do right. it. Um, you know, if you find one of these cold, dreary days, you ain't got nothing to do. You're waiting around, and, and you know, it's time to start doing things yeah. like that. Yeah, because uh, line you know, change is good once a year, you know. Sure, yeah, you should do it. Yeah, and you don't have to do it much more often than that unless you happen to right. put it through some rigorous stuff somewhere for some reason. But usually once a year, line change is pretty you know, good. You know, another thing, uh, you know, places that you plan on going and all, you know, check your boat launches out, you know, ask a few questions. Are boat launches still operable if they, right. if they even, 
still in, in, in business these days, or if they're good, if something ain't nothing happened to them over time. Right. Um, it's just a lot of things you need to start checking at this time of the year when you're getting ready to prepare yeah. to go fishing. Life vests, make sure they ain't in your duck hunting boat no more. Right. Get them back Whatever. over in your, in your fishing rig. And you know yeah. when you're uh, getting ready to fish, you know your hard baits, you probably pretty got a pretty good uh, idea of what you got right. in your tackle box. But plastics is different. Mm -hmm. You know, you might think you might have a pack of your favorite right. brush hog or right. sweet beaver or whatever, and then you go to digging around there and you can't find one nowhere That's right. on that water. And that, I've done it. Yeah. And I don't like that one. I don't bit. like it neither so, when the person uh, with you catching fish on it and he wants yeah. to charge you $10 a bait. <laughs> oh, they get high out there on the water. That's right. <laughs> and you're willing to pay it. That's yeah. the sad yeah. thing. But anyway, you, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, go get you your easy, stuff. Get ready. Uh, and you know, plastic baits yeah. is, as a, as a rule don't cost expensive like the hard sure. baits. So, you know, make sure you got what you're looking for. You know, that's right. Especially if you're thinking about going somewhere, what's a good color there? Usually, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes you might think you got everything you need, and you get somewhere and say, "Man, I wish I would have got me oh, yeah. this color, whatever." You know. Yeah. And, uh, so it's always a good idea to check your tackle out as well. Right. You know, and. Uh, it's a good thing to keep that tuned up too. Yeah. Another thing, uh, you know, some of these bodies of waters that you may have not ventured out into in the last six months may have changed. You know, be careful. Uh, trees may be down and so forth and so on in, in areas where you think you can run wide open where you did all last oh, summer yeah. and, and things may have changed. Uh, oh, without a doubt. Especially over the winter, sure. If you get around the marsh area and, and mm -hmm. lower, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, I mean, the, Saltwater fishing ain't gonna quit, you know. Right. The, the redfish are still on fire right. right now, so if you ain't been out in the water a while, especially those areas right. can change a lot. Even, even uh, sand bottoms and stuff right. moving, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. hey, it is what it is. Check you know? your fishing license. Well, look, it's getting ready to be crawfish time, and uh, of course you can buy them right now. But I'm talking about the spillway yeah. season, and uh, I got a little trip we took last year with a. Uh, uh, Jimmy Bean Blanchard and back in the spillway and I uh, got a chance to catch a few of them Chaffalaya Basin crawfish, man. Yeah, that's coming up. Everybody in the whole state of Louisiana looking forward that's to right. eating crawfish. Well, that's why we're going to show this now that's is right. to get y'all mouth watering for them bald <laughs> crawfish, man. We'll see y'all right after the break. Roland J. Robert Distributor in Burnside has been keeping South Louisiana fueled up since 1924. We provide wholesale fuel and petroleum products to industries and service stations. We also specialize in the development of retail convenience stores. Our people have the expertise and support to help you start a thriving business. If you're looking to build your own Chevron, Shell, or unbranded service station, call Keith, Jim, or Harold. Get fueled up with Roland J. Robert Distributor. I tell you what, this is the newest RSX A50i. John Deere calls it their newest species of gator. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. This unit right here will do zero to 30 in three seconds. It's four wheel drive, four wheel independent suspension. I know a lot of people would like to have that. <laughs> <laughs> Functionality is one thing, the speed is what right. they like, bro. Come up. Beautiful song. Time to make up another couple of sacks, remember? That's all right. I'd like to make a movie like this in French. That's beautiful That's sight. That's a jolie, bro. That's right. Well, that's right, bro. That's right. Aye, yeah, yeah. This is here for French, huh? Well, that's right, bro. That's right. There you are, boy. That's plenty red there. Yeah, you're right. That's, that is a pretty trap there, bro. Get in there, boy. Here we are, man, getting ready to put the boat in. This is how the work starts. Get the spillway launch on the springtime morning, baby. Keep getting them boats in. Most of the crawfish today. Although the fish have been biting.
Get out of there, big boy. There you're right, boy. That is a pretty sack. That's a pretty trap there. You know, uh, I've had the privilege of eating your crawfish on more than one occasion, and I've had my chance to sample a lot of other crawfish from different places, ponds and everything. But one thing I've noticed all the time with your crawfish is they clean. Yeah, well, what I did, I took and cut out this bottom, and I welded these, had these pipes welded in here. They're about three-eighths of an inch apart. All the fish and the trash and the sticks, the bones, everything goes on the floor. Everything's down here and three right. or four times a day. I would just take them and throw that out, clean the boat up. But you know, yeah, when you get these sacks of crawfish, they shouldn't have any trash in them. And these things are designed to hold about 40 pounds to the trap. Just take them off the hook. I put my foot under the sack, that's the trick. And she just comes off. I keep that hole covered. You pull from the inside. <laughs> That's about 39, 40 pounds. First stack today. <laughs> yeah. And the twin is right on the side of it, huh? Yeah, I'll just stack them up. Put another one on. Woo! They mean, bro. All right. Looks like it's testing pretty good, huh? Yeah, buddy. Oh, they would have a lot more if you come back in two days. This has been a week. Yeah. See, they had a catfish in here. Oh, they ate him up. Crawfish is an eating machine now. Ferocious. Very. Ferocious. I'm glad they don't get about three pounds. <laughs> we couldn't swim. Well, it is a baby lobster. Looking for walk. Yeah. Before they get me, I'm gonna get them. You gotta look every trap for wasp and poisonous snakes. Because they out there. The other day they had a water moccasin in my foot right here. I didn't know. It didn't bite me though. Pona, Miss Asebosha. Just letting the Holy Spirit lead in God. Like it says, lean not on your own understanding. He said, but trust him in all your ways, acknowledge him. He's gonna show you the right way. And I let him show me. Let him show me my places and techniques, and it's working for me. Trying to get out now. That is beautiful, that's, yeah. That's what they do, see that little one? Yeah. The longer you leave them, they find that hole, and they get out. That is a beautiful red color in that sunshine, though, bro. Come on. Some beautiful crawfish. Man, that's a bump. That's gonna make it good on somebody's boiling table. Sir? So that's gonna make it good on somebody's table. Ay, ay, ay. So that's a new trap, and the new trap catch better than the old trap. I don't guess you've ever figured that out, huh? Why? It's not that. This trap here, it's a five foot trap. Right. And I got some that's six foot, I got some that's four foot, I got some that's three foot. When they run, they'll work in any trap. Right. But this five foot trap is the best trap on the market because you can stick it out the water a foot. If the water's bad, the crawfish will climb and they'll live. 
and a new trap. It's not all banged up in the back and everything. I put these nails on it so I don't destroy them. In the old days, we used to just fold Crimp them like them over, this right. and tear them up. But today, I put a nail because of the lilies. The lilies, with, I use a clothespin, but you can't use them in these lilies. Right. <laughs> It'll come off every time. So I use a number 16 nail, and uh, it worked perfect. Time to make up another couple sacks, huh, bro? That's all right. That is a pretty trap there, bro. How many pounds in that one? That's four and a half. And they got so many, they're starting to eat each other. Yeah. So we'll have to run these a little more rough. That's a pretty sight there for a crawfish in the trap yeah. of that many. Yeah. That's when you make it some money. That's right. Take a few bucks. Yeah, don't take long to fill up a sack with traps like that, huh? That's five pounds to the trap. This here is some full trap that I put out here. And I'm coming in here with some new traps next week. Some five footers. That's a jolie, Bob. That's right. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. French, huh? Yeah, I forgot. Not too many people can talk French no more. I'd like to make a movie like this in French. <laughs> All the French speaking people. I wonder if that would go over pretty good. Calafat, boy. That's right. Yeah, you're right, boy. That's plenty red there. That's beautiful, man. That's red in that sunlight. You can see this is a lot of hard work. I still love it. But by the end of the day, I don't have to take nothing to help me sleep at night. Believe me, I sleep good. Yeah, I've done it a few times in my life, kind of for fun. Raising about 75 traps and about twice a week on the weekend, that, that was plenty for me. Pretty crooked. Yeah, there it is. I'll tell you that. Hollowa, the yellow cat. There yeah, you're right. You don't want that to stay here. Spillway is alive and well, man. All kind of animal life. All right, folks. Look, we're wrapping it up today. Uh, it's been a great day out here in the Spillway with Jimmy. Bean Blanchard. Ran 240 traps, right? 240. And we got 12 sacks of crawfish. 12 sacks of big crawfish. Yeah, they're they also pretty crawfish. Y'all saw on the film there how 
beautiful red, those things looking at sunshine, ain't nothing like the spillway crossing, you know. And you mentioned a few times we had a little weird winter this year, which caused things to be a little different. Caught a lot of crawfish early, don't you? We caught crawfish early, but where I'm fishing right here, I usually catch in April, and it's just starting in the middle of June right now to start running in a lot of these places. We're, we're a good month behind because of the freezes that we had right. this, this past winter. Uh, Our vegetation is coming back. Yeah, but it's still been a good year, right? Best year I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Well, the price was high early, and yeah. that was because the pond was frozen and too cold. Yeah, we started out at uh, over $3 a pound. Yeah. Yeah, All right, folks, we appreciate y'all tuning in. We're going to see you somewhere next time on Ascension Outdoors. Hi, welcome to this right this way. Whether it's keeping you warm through the winter, helping you get dinner on the table, or making sure your fresh catch is fried just right, Feral Gas makes your house a home. Our dependable nationwide network ensures you have propane when you need it. When choosing a propane supplier, you want the right partner. Feral Gas employees live right here in Louisiana, so they understand the needs that you have as a home propane user. Join the Feral Gas family today. All right, folks, welcome back. Man, I'll tell you what, you know, we've been going at Chatfly Basin all our life, you know, mm -hmm. fishing, you know, and crawfishing a, a good bit of too. Right. But it ain't much like going back in there and enjoying oh, nature no, fun. like it is when you get back Better in believe there. It. You know, it's the water hyacinths are a pain in the rear, yeah. you know, and the invasive species. But, uh, you know, you riding around in there and you see all kind of wildlife in there, birds sure. in the spring of the year, you know, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Usually, you're going to see an eagle now yeah. in the uh, chapel. Oh, it's basin. incredible. I think it's amazing how that water rises in there every year and oh, those crawfish yeah. coming there like mm -hmm. that and just the amount that comes out of there is unimaginable, yeah, unbelievable, it is, man. A, it is a lot of crawfish. A lot of work to that, though. Oh, it is. You that know, don't come man, easy. No. And, you know, they don't come a long way. You know, you notice in that in five and six foot trout. Oh, yeah. Right? They long where they can they sure. can stay out in the water and you don't have to worry about your crawfish dying too much if yeah. bad water comes through. And technology, even crawfishing, yeah. has changed, you know. Got them boats rigged out for it. And, yeah, oh, yeah. Know, them pro-drive mo motors, oh, yeah. you know, they use them rather than sure. them outboards. So. Oh, you anyway, getting me hungry, man. Oh, I'm telling you, Jimmy Blanchard, appreciate that, man. It was yeah, a really. nice trip. All right, we're going to do a few pictures here. This is Miles Mir with a 225-pound eight-point buck he killed on Thanksgiving Day. <clears throat> After all the guests and family ate and left, and Mama went to take a nap. He went to sit on his deer stand, and look what came along. Man. <laughs> Poor old deer. Now he's going to be, they're going to be eating them next time. Yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> good, good kill, man. Yeah, really, no doubt. Congratulations on that. Yeah, Here's yeah. a quick, you gonna have a quick little hunt. Here's a quick little spillway hunt by Chris Piper, Eric Russian, and Justin Piper. Uh, killed these six ducks. And uh, the one duck, the one, the pink bill there, is a black bellied whistling yeah. duck. Most of them are gone at this time of the year. They kind of migrate, I would assume, yeah. back towards Texas and all. Right. But uh, it's more and more sticking around oh, yeah. every year yeah, yeah. later in the winter. I was going to yeah. say that. Yeah. Just the it's more, more they more. come, the more they stay a little bit yeah. later. And eventually they're probably yeah. going to have Let's a huntable hope so. population. Like them, you know, a yeah. few of them. Sure. You know what I'm saying? When you can hunt. Right. All right, Trey A. Bear killed this five-point buck on December 26th, day after Christmas, on an afternoon hunt with his dad, Gary A. Bear Jr. Congratulations, man. Big smile on the young man, Trey. Oh, yeah. You got me beat by three points. Here's this another one smiling right here. That's right. Little Wesley Pinion. Now, I've been knowing this little guy since the day he was born. Uh, his daddy yeah. uh, took him hunting. I mean, carry him. Carry him in his hands out there yeah. you know, in a blanket and wrap him up and bring him with him. He, 
He's seven years old now and uh, killed his first deer this year hunting uh, with McElroy Hunting Club on a dog hunt. Yeah. Nelson was with him, and congratulations. That was the day after Christmas. Uh, good present Santa Claus brought you right there. That's right. Uh, congratulations, son. I, I know you was very proud of that. You've been looking at him for seven years. You finally got your finally chance. Got him yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, Tater Darbone and Candace Stafford caught these 18 speckled trout on Lake Decade on a cold wind blowing Sunday. The bite was slow, but they caught them all on chicken on a chain, bro. Hey, Classic right. cockahoe. Bite That's was slow. Mess. That's where you live when I go there, spec fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the only one who gets a slow bite when you go there. Then you talk to somebody the next day, oh man, we limited out. You know what I'm saying? You know how that goes. That's right. Hey, man, he's a nice buck killed That's by a cord brignac, yeah. And it, right here, right here at home, Marlboro WMA. Uh, kill him with a 4570 on uh, December 26th, yeah. Day, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the third one in this batch. I'm That's sure. right. Yeah, that was a pretty popular day. Well, a lot of people's off at yeah. that time of the That's year, right. and it's right in the peak of when a deer really start Right. Wanting to rut and move around. Right. It really is a lot of activity right in that little area of time right. for deer in our area. That's right. It's perfect. They did it, man. I tell you what, them swamp hunters, bro. They got they got to, yeah. they got to hustle. Yeah, you're right. All right, Jeremy Robay and Cody Touye killed this variety of ducks and geese on December twentieth and twenty first in Lacassine. A couple of speckle bellies and a Couple green heads and all kind of ducks there, a few teal. Some good looking eating right Oh there. yeah, good. And speckle bellies, uh, oh, when it comes to eating right. geese, yeah, it's that's like right. eating a big teal almost. That's right. They're that's very good. similar. Man, you're right. Congratulations. Hey, here's Caitlin Lamario. Uh, she killed her first buck, an eight point. Nice deer. Uh, January the 4th, killed at 5 p.m. in the evening in Iberville, Paris, Grove State, with a seven millimeter 08 rifle. Congratulations, that is a nice deer That's right a there. One, yeah, it look like a big long deer, yeah. man. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, folks, look, we appreciate y'all tuning in. And look, if you are watching and you happen to have a business, you need to do a little advertisement and you got an advertising budget, you know, uh, our rates are very reasonable. Yeah. If you feel like it, just drop us a line, Ascension Outdoors at etail.net, you know, and we'll see if we can uh, strike up a deal. Hey, we'll see y'all next time on Ascension Outdoors. Appreciate y'all watching. From South Louisiana